at 31, let's take a look at example 3 and see if we can graph this function together. Now, I want to go ahead and start from scratch. Let's pretend we had no idea what this graph looked like. I want to pick my favorite five points. I want to see what's going to happen here. And then I want to have a combo. I left these two blank intentionally. I want us to start to be efficient at what we're picking so we can make our lives a little bit easier for ourselves. So let's try this. First, just take note that my base is greater than one. So this is going to be a graph of logarithmic growth. So I should be incre increasing as I move left to right. All right, so let's try and do this. If I plug negative two in, I would have log base two of negative two. And I'm not allowed to take the logarithm of a negative number. All right, so that does not exist. If I try to plug negative one in, I have the same problem. I can't plug a negative number in as my argument. My argument must be strictly positive. So by that same rationale, I can't plug zero in. So these do me no good. Okay, now let's try log base two of one. So let's erase that and let's take a look at log base two of one. So I want you to think, and we've talked about this a couple of times, and it's gonna repeat itself, but it's good to keep bringing it up. If I wanted to figure out what this number is, right? Let's say I called this my y value for right now. I could turn that into the equivalent exponential equation and see when is two to the y equal to zero, right? What exponent do I need on two to get to one? And we've mentioned this a few times. Whenever your argument is one, your exponent will be zero. All right, so I have my first ordered pair. All right, let's take a look at log base two of two. Now again, you can take it and transfer it into its equivalent exponential equation, but I do want us to practice getting more comfortable with logarithms. What exponent do you need on two to get to two? Well, you just need one, okay? So I have two ordered pairs. That's probably not enough for me to solve this, so I think we want to get a couple more x coordinates, but instead of just picking three and four, let's think about what would be easiest to pick. If the base of your logarithm is two, it would be beneficial to pick powers of base two. So let's think about this. If I wanted log base two of four, for example, why would I pick four? Because four is like saying two squared, and whenever the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives is your exponent. The next thing I would, or the next number I would pick would be eight, because eight is a power of two, right? This is log base two of two cubed. So my exponent here, oops, I forgot the x coordinate. My exponent, or my y value, is three. So when it comes to choosing x values. If you're going to go this way, if you're not going to use your calculator as table function, if you want to practice it by hand, which is great to practice it, start being smart about what x values you pick. Intentionally pick x values that are powers of your base so you can get nice integer answers here. It's not to say you couldn't have plugged in 3 or 5, but it just makes your life a little bit easier when everything um, matches up. So I've got my four ordered pairs. Let's see what we've got. All right, so we've got one zero. We've got two one. I've got four two and I've got eight three. So I can see my logarithmic growth growing out that way. Now I mentioned this on example one, but it's worth repeating a few times. Wherever your argument zeroes out, that's exactly where your asymptote will occur. So let me move this graph up so we can get some of our traits listed. All right, so if I take a look at that argument, that argument is x, so when x is equal to zero, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. So let me go ahead and draw that in. Okay, 
So we got that started. Let me go ahead and scooch my graph pretty close. Oops, I shifted this paper. All right, pretty close to that vertical asymptote. It will not cross it. All right, so let's talk about how we get these traits. Your domain will always be when your argument is greater than zero. So for my domain here, I need to worry about when my argument of x is greater than zero. Well, that is quite literally when x is gonna go from zero all the way right, and we can see that. I start at x equaling zero and I go right forever. Now my range, you can see I'm heading down forever here, and I've got up forever here, so my range is negative infinity to infinity, okay? Now before we move on from this, I just wanna play through a few more traits. Even though we didn't explicitly ask you for them here, I just want to practice them. So I'm going to go ahead, put a little separator here, and I just want to say, like, just for extra practice, actually, I'm going to put it below. I'll scoot this whole thing up, and we'll talk about what we're going to see, or what, how we're going to play this out. Let me move this up. All right, so let's put the separator here and say for extra practice, let's rattle off the rest of the traits. So let's see if we can find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the end behavior. Did we have any, well we did our VAs actually, we did our asymptotes, and let's talk about holes. All right, so we can get through the rest of these and we'll be in pretty good shape. Oops, you can't see that I wrote the word holes right there. Okay, so let's start with the y-intercept. And I'm just going to write this here that my original function was log base 2 of x. If I wanted the y-intercept, right, for the y-intercept, I'm going to let x equal 0. All right, but if I try and do f of 0, that is log base 2 of 0, and that does not exist. So there is no y-intercept to this function. Okay, now for the x-intercept, if you ever want an x-intercept, you want to let y equal 0. Well, if I let y equal 0, that's me saying, well, when is log base 2 of x equal to zero. Well, that's like saying when is two to the zero equal to x, which is saying when is x equal to one. So my x-intercept is the ordered pair one, zero. All right, oops, you can't see my work, my bad. Here, I'm scooching it up, but I'm gonna scooch it right back down in a little bit so we can look at the graph. So whenever you want an x-intercept, let your argument equal one. So really, it's whenever x is equal to 1, and since our argument was just this simple x term, it's whenever x is equal to 1. Because again, whenever your argument is 1, your exponent will be 0. So whenever this term is 1, the y value will be 0, and that will always give you an x-intercept. Now I'm going to scooch this back up so that we can do a couple things. I want to point out the end behavior, excuse me, I want to point out the x-intercept, and then I want to talk about the end behavior. So we saw the x-intercept, it was right here at 1, 0. All right, now for end behavior, I want you to take a look at your domain. You don't have a negative infinity in your domain, all right? We, we, aren't, we don't have that because we, our argument has to be positive. So when I don't have a negative infinity in my domain, I don't have any left end behavior. So sometimes there's a misconception that end behavior is the left end of your graph and the right end of your graph. So some people would say, well, I have a vertical asymptote for my left end behavior, my arrow is going down. That's incorrect. End behavior is the left end of the x-axis and the right end of the x-axis. So there is nothing on the left side of my x-axis. That's why I have no end behavior on the left. But I do have a right arrow going up. So if I scroll this almost all the way back down, there we go. In terms of end behavior, I would say none on the left but I have a right arrow headed up, okay? Now, if we think back to when we were talking about holes, that's when we had rational functions and we had a factor common to the numerator and denominator. If you look at my argument, there's no fractions in it. 
so I, I don't have any holes, okay? All right, so with all that, I just wanted to go over again, your basic, this is long base two of X, this is what the graph look like, here are all the traits, and we're good to go on that. And we're gonna keep on practicing how to graph these logarithmic functions, and I'm gonna shift them left, right, up, down, and reflect them. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.